there are a couple of 11 inch and everything, so it's good in general and say, is it, is it 10? Okay, so you know, because there's no more money in this.
that should then go on and run. However, don't, don't go anywhere because we've had that many organisational changes the last two years. You could be here sometime. But when you look down the actual list of jobs that you've described that as, I don't for one minute understand how a senior manager integrated hospital discharge team is going to suddenly vanish. I don't understand how a in interim assistant director adults and uh, disability services, which is clearly not going to go away at um, can suddenly vanish. In fact, just a few years ago, we had an interim chief executive, which was Graham Burgess, before he took the job permanently. So I presume that's never going to happen again, because that's actually a permanent role under the current system. So it, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny what your, uh, your justification for actually having them in the first place. Uh, so a lot of those posts that you've just talked about will be covering My post is a new post in the new city structure. Um, that the day that I was asked to come to Wirral, we went out to the market for the permanent recruitment. The permanent recruitment has taken place. The person starts on the 26th of November, and I leave on the 6th of December once I've handed over. If I can, just one more point, and this will this will uh, tie into again what I need to be talking about. I remember sitting on, I think it was this particular committee, but it was in another guise, whatever we were calling it at the time, and it was Kevin Adley at the time. And this is, a, this is an indication as to why we have this medical round that everyone's spoken about, is that within the public sector, and in very specific terms within the council uh, employment sector, we have very specific criteria, but also um, we only look to the same pool of people that we actually employ. Now, I understand that within adult social services there are very specific uh, experiences, so if you needed to take on the director, they would have to have very specific experience in order to carry out that role. However, I do remember we were uh, trying to employ, and it was £40,000 a year, you know, £48,000 a year, gold plates and pension, flexi time, overtime, etc., etc., expenses. Um, and Kevin Adley told me at that point in time, it was a business uh, development manager, strangely, and um, Kevin Adley told me that we could not find anyone. Uh, we could not find anyone for £48,000 a year. The average wage across the world is somewhere in the region of about £27,000. Uh, and in Birkenhead it's a lot less, and my board it's probably a bit more. Um, and we could not find anyone. And the reason we weren't finding anyone is we weren't looking. Uh, we looked within the, exactly the same pool of people within the public sector that we always look for, and until we look outside of that in a broader range, and business being one of them, that clearly we could go to the private sector and look and bring someone in. Um, until we actually address that, we'll just go around in this many go around and push up prices, push up wages, use instrument, uh, whatever's directly as instrument directors, and we'll never actually achieve it. That's what needs nipping in the bud.
answer the question of you know, why why you know, people choose to work here and choose to leave and on whether the committee can think that's really actually seen that. So that. I think that would serve more to solving the agency and interim problem than just seeing the figures that people are paid on a daily basis. And so just going back to my first question, Chair, um, you know, what, what's been the number one um, factor that's led to this increase in the need for agency and interim staff? Yeah, very good point. I just ask Philip to come in. So um, I would suggest that um, probably children's services, um, that's um, so it's the national trend, but also uh, if you get a bad Ofsted rating, which we did a few years ago, then that would affect the water reputation. So a lot of it is about how we brand ourselves, our reputation in the market, what we're up against. So we've got Liverpool very close, Manchester's not that far away. So we've got some big competition out there, and um, it's about how how well we present ourselves in the marketplace and whether we are seen as a good employer. Mr. It's a huge loss of money that we've been 
handing out on a regular basis. We know there's been many changes in chief executives and different formulas. We had one with a plan A, who really decimated the authority. So plan B is something the new chief executive will bring forward when you get on the left. We've had many options, not opportunities like that. But someone who was a contractor during his work in life, I know the difference between a contract and a pay rate. And pay rate is something everybody rubs their hands on. Because if you're not receiving it. It is so, especially when you see it, because it's so beneficial. And while we were looking into this, I, I, I see our specific figures. I'm not going to mention any names, I'm not going to mention anything, but we have to have people who are on a, a daily rate in this authority of £719, pounds, £500, pounds, £450, pounds, £245, pounds, £515, pounds, £600, pounds, £750, pounds, £500, £550, pounds, £275, pounds, £300, pounds, £350. A day. That's costing us all for us an awful lot of money. Those day rates are more than two weeks' work and normal work in this authority. And it's about time it was wheeled in and brought to a halt. There, there is the argument that was put forward that you bring people in, you've got to pay slightly above the odds for the 20% of the facts, or the 28% of the plant. Plus the AT or whatever you want to add. But we, we're getting into a situation with the authority. In the last year alone, we've already had 16 interims who've been in over the years. I don't think we've got to sell 18 months. So it is an awful lot of money that this local authority is spending on a week daily, a mind weekly basis, and it's about time it was real day. I've got a recommendation to make at the end here. I hope you can support Comments and a question. Comments uh, to Mr. Tools. 
you said that, you know, somebody came in, thousand pounds a day, they snapped the hand up, and they hated the air, take up a whole piece, and then a thousand pounds a year. I think it's a lot of money we spend it uh, when you've got employees at home. Uh, and a question to, to Liz. We know what 16, 17, we know what 17, 18. I know we haven't got a final figure for 18, 19, but we've got an indication of how it might be and what the cost might be. I think mean, it's difficult to say, but I, I don't think we're going to be any any different to we were last year. Okay. Uh, just, just, just a quick comment, um, following on what Anita said. Uh, I always look at what I call the cost benefit analysis, and it's basically we do it in the line, but by the way, she doesn't have to do any cost benefit when we get it. The benefit is it doesn't mean the cost of us buy it. And I think it's the same in every walk of life. If you go into a supermarket and it's a pack of biscuits there and it's 99p, you think, hmm, there's another pack of there, 50p. But the 99p ones are much nicer and I'll get more enjoyment out of them than the 50p or the other way around. So, so the, the outcome should be the cost benefit analysis. What is the cost of employing these people? Some people for a month, some people for more. And what's the benefit we get out of that? The end result is that the benefit you get out of it does not meet the cost, and it just is worthwhile exercise. Okay. So, can I thank you, Agnes, for your report and answering the questions from members? Uh, we have a stating that a ceiling should be set on the amount of consultants and interim staff are paid. And this should reflect on the national pay grades for such work. Can, can I just say, I mean, I think fishing in the dark here, 
there is quite a bit of information in, in, in this. Uh, and if you need to say something that hasn't been answered, uh, we may we, we need to come back with more information at a later stage. But, 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 but in the interim, we just said we've got here, we've got a recommendation here in front of us, and we've got a counter recommendation okay. after a long debate and the calls from. To make sure, I think I hear the two recommendations. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the report. So the current agency, current agency contract is managed through the matrix SCM operating demand service on Mr. S. And then it says the contract is the result of a collaborative tender process within the Liverpool City region contracted to March 2021. So I don't see how we can make a recommendation that we can't have matrix when there's a contract in place for the next three years. Yeah. Um, that's not exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying that we look outside of the matrix system because if we hadn't looked outside the matrix system, we would not have the body of the team that we've got now. So I'm saying, I'm, what I'm suggesting in my recommendation is that if we can't recruit through the matrix system, for the specialists that we need, that we have the flexibility to go to other pools and um, to avoid the fact that we may then have interims coming in. Can I ask another comment, yeah? Another suggestion, Joe, yeah, which is um, there have been those two uh, additional uh, propositions put forward, the one that uh, Council Leaches just mentioned, um, and then the further one over. Ceiling on the amount of consultants and interviews that are paid to a national level. Um, perhaps because of the discussion that's just happened, rather than a direct recommendation to the decision making bodies, you actually ask uh, the, uh, the director to investigate the, uh, the possibilities, benefits, and disbenefits of doing those things. Bring a further report back to you and make a recommendation. I'm just saying, obviously, and I thought it, but I would like to be called if I did with this. Well, I think you're on TV and we're going to take it. Thank you, Phil, for the video. No, I'll only be called in a minute. Okay, again, thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, number seven is the commercial strategy. So we'll